Hey guys, what's up, Redactions here, and welcome back to this brand new video. So today it is time for episode two of the Setup Basic series, and this time we're going to be talking about something that's super important and unique to karting, and that is track width. Now, track width is one of the most confusing parts of karting and one of the most difficult things to get right. And in order to understand how track width works, we first need to understand how a kart works and how it is different from a racing car or just another car in general. So let's take a close-up look at this thing first, and then we'll get right into how to tune and find your perfect track width all right people so moving to the back of the card here you can see that this thing has a solid rear axle you know in a car of course the rear wheels can turn but what makes it different from a card is that if i turn this wheel then this wheel will turn at exactly the same speed and if you're going in a straight line that's not a problem but once you start turning for example once you start turning to the left uh, the outside wheel will have to cover a greater distance than the inside wheel and that of course is going to be a problem that's going to cause friction this thing is going to slow down and of course your tires are going to wear now for cars they have made up a perfect solution and that is a differential this means that both of the rear wheels can turn independently from one another so for example in a car if i turn this wheel then that one will not turn at all or turn at a lower speed but in a car you cannot do that and you're stuck with a solid rear axle so both wheels turn at exactly the same speed at all times but luckily our amazingly brilliant karting engineers have found a solution to this problem and for that we need to take a look at the front so when we take a closer look at the front wheel we can see that the front wheel actually only uh, has about this much uh, of it sticking out at the bottom which is enough which is about the, the, the total ground clearance of the cart but then when we actually turn the wheel completely to the right you can see that the uh, right rear wheel actually pushes down a whole lot more onto the ground and that is what we want because this causes the inside right rear wheel to come off the ground and this is something that is unique to carts carts are specifically designed to do this and of course the same goes for the left hand side as well let's turn the wheel all the way to the left there you go you can see it, it's quite a big difference so the inside rear wheel comes off the ground but what does that mean well it means that the outside wheel can make the amount of turns that it needs to complete the full outer circle but the inside wheel is not touching the ground so it's not creating friction it's not sliding it's not doing anything it's just rotating freely in the air in this slow motion footage on the screen right now you can clearly see that in these cards the rear wheel comes off the ground when you turn in and here guys is where track width comes into play because as you guys can probably imagine how wide or how narrow the cart will be set up at the front of the rear will have a massive amount of impact on how much the inside rear wheel will come up or even if it will come up at all all right so now that we know the basics of how this thing works now it is time to start thinking about how we can make changes to the track width to make the car perform better so let's say you go out for a day of testing at your local track uh, then I recommend starting out with the standard amount of track width at the front and at the rear. Now this may be different from car to car, but for OTK it is 1390 millimeters at the rear. And then at the front it is two small spacer rings per side. So put the card on standard, go out there and see what you feel. The things that you feel are really important in determining what you're going to do to this thing. So let's say you've done a couple of laps and you determine that the rear end is too slidey. Now here it is important that you distinguish between two things. Is it too slidey because the inside rear wheel is not picking up? Or is it slidey because it's picking up too much? And as a driver, you can really feel the difference. When the car picks up, you really feel it. And when it doesn't, you just feel sliding. And in that way, you can also feel when it picks up too much. It kind of feels like it wants to go nose first into the ground and then that the rear end comes around. All right, people, so welcome to Mechanic POV. Let's change the rear track width. So step one is remove both of your rear tires. And that is number two. All right, so the next tool you will need is a six millimeter Allen key. And that is to undo the main bolt. And then it's really just a case of putting it in, turning it to the left, and there we go. Now, some cards have wheel hubs that have an extra screw here, like this one. If that is the case for your card, then please undo this little screw first before you unscrew this one. If you don't do this one first, you might damage it. Now let's say you feel that the rear end is sliding because the uh, inside wheel is picking up too much. What you want to do then is increase the track width a little bit. Now to do that, grab yourself a measuring tape, put it on a part of the axle bearing. It doesn't really matter where, but make sure that you always use the same point. And then from there, just measure to the outside of the wheel hub. And in my case, that's 23 centimeters, as you can see. So the, the next thing is just really easy. Just move it out by a couple of millimeters. I suggest going for two millimeters at a time. So now we're going to move it to 23.2. So let's see if we can move it by hand a little bit. Oh yes, we can. Now if it doesn't move by hand, just tap it a little bit with the hammer. 
And guys, there we go, 23.2. So now what you want to do is get rid of your measuring tape and just re-tighten the wheel hub. Now to tighten it, I recommend putting in your key like this. There are some people who are strong enough to do it like this, but I'm not, so I'm going to do it this way. Now, of course, do the same for the other side. You don't want to run an asymmetric setup. So, quick little recap, measure, unscrew, move it a little bit by hand, or if that doesn't work, a little bit by hammer, remeasure, put it to the correct width, and tighten it again, and done. That's really all there is to it. Now it's just a case of putting the wheels back on there and going to out on track to have more fun. Now guys, you just heard me talk about that the standard track width of an OTK is uh, 1390 millimeters. And that is measured from the outside of this wheel to the outside of this wheel. And to measure it, really simple. Get one of your buddies to help you, get a measuring tape and put it through the axle. So like this. Then of course it will come out at the other end and then just ask your buddy to hold it evenly with the outside of the rim. And then when he does that, you can easily measure the width if you actually look at your rim like this. And I know that with the position I currently have the wheel hubs in that I will end up with a beautiful 1400 millimeters, which also happens to be the maximum allowed width in my races. So now that you guys know how to change the track width on this thing, let's go into a little bit of a recap. When you turn in and the car picks up too much, increase the track width. When you turn in and you feel like the car wants to go straight on or it doesn't pick up as nicely, decrease the track width. And guys, if you think about it, it's kind of logical. Of course, a wider card is going to have more difficulties picking up than a shorter card. Because the distance between the rear wheels is greater, there's just simply more force needed to lift that inside wheel off the ground. Basic physics. So ideally, you want to run as narrow as you possibly can. Because if you go too wide, not only will you suffer understeer, but also you have a big chance, if you're racing in something like Rotex or X30, that the engine will actually struggle to, uh, you know, get power through the immense amount of grip that you will have when you put the uh, rear end so wide. And if you're driving OTK, let me tell you a little bit of a life hack. If you put the rear track width to 1395 millimeters, so that is from uh, the outside of the rim to that side of the rim, that's pretty much always the perfect amount of track width. So let's take a look at the front track width now. In function, it is the same as the rear track width, but in the way how it works is actually completely the reverse. Here it is, the wider you go at the front, the more easy the rear end will pick up, and the narrower you go at the front, the more difficult it becomes for the car to pick up that rear wheel. But the sliding of the rear end can also put you on the wrong foot sometimes. Sometimes it might feel like your car is too strong on the front end. You turn in and the rear end wants to come round. But then what actually might sometimes be the case is that the car is actually not picking up. Because when you don't have enough grip at the front, the car will understeer into the corner. Because of course the rear wheels are pushing, pushing you ahead into the corner. But sometimes you turn in and the car just doesn't pick up. And when it doesn't pick up, it actually starts sliding. And a way to combat this is actually to increase the track width at the front, which in theory puts more grip at the front. But in reality, your inside rear wheel is not picking up and that's making you slide. So sometimes putting more grip at the front can actually make the rear end more stable, which is really weird if you think about it. Now, another thing that could be happening is that you're just not going into the corner fast enough and not creating enough energy in the car to make it lift. That's also a possibility, so make sure that that's not the case before you make setup changes. But for now, let's dive into how you can change the track width at the front. So, like with the rear wheels, Start with removing the front wheels. That's one. And that's two. So once you've removed the tire, remove the wheel hub. For that you need one of these rattle wrenches and a 22 millimeter socket. And of course put it to loosen. So you really just want to put it on there and just twist it until it comes off. And then the wheel nut should just come right off like that. Now you could just take it off like that, but if you do not want to look like an idiot, Take your two fingers, place it on this ring right here and remove the entire thing at once. Then in here you'll find a couple of rings. One is stuck, there we go. Now OTK actually has a pretty interesting system when it comes to these spacer rings. And that is that the smaller rings are actually five millimeters and this one is 15 millimeters. And that might sound illogical at first, but it's actually really, really smart. Let's say you want to do five millimeters, one ring. 10 millimeters, two rings. But then when you want to go to 15, you remove these, put the big one there. So that's 15. Let's say you want to do 20. Then you add the other one, and let's say you want to do the last one, 25. You add it like that. But we were on this ring. And let's say you did a couple of laps, you used this ring, and the front end was biting a little bit too much and turning in a little bit too aggressively and making the car pick up a little bit too aggressively. What you want to do then is just 
take off this ring, put the smaller ones there, put the wheel hub back on there, and then put back the last space ring you had on the inside of the wheel hub. And guys, if you have an OTK, be careful because this ring is actually not symmetrical. As you can see here, this side of the ring actually has a sloped edge and this side doesn't. And you always want to make the slope edge point towards the inside. So we're going to put it in there like this. You can really just slide it on with your fingers like that, make sure it goes on there properly. Then you want to put back on this ceiling ring and then you want to put back on the wheel nut. First do it by hand and then just go to work. Now, if you've tightened it too much, of course you will notice that you cannot turn it anymore, but also you will notice that you cannot twist these rings anymore. In my opinion, this is too tight. So what we do then, we loosen it up a little bit. So turn this to loosen. And then we start loosening up the wheel up again to the point where we can barely make these rings turn. So feeling, still not moving, not moving, not moving, not moving. I feel the pressure coming off. Not moving, not moving, not moving. There, there we go. Now we can turn the rings a little bit by using a little bit of force. To me, that is the perfect amount of tightness on this nut. So we have now successfully decreased the track width from 15 millimeters to 10 millimeters. And of course, again, you want to do it on the other side too, because you don't want to be running an asymmetric setup. So let's do it again, but a little bit more quickly. Put your rotor range to loosen, loosen it to the last part by hand. Take off everything at once. Take your two small rings, put them on there first, then put back the wheel hub. Take your big ring, look for the sloped side, put that on first. Take the closing ring, put it on there. Take the wheel nut, put that back on there. Put the rudder wrench to tighten. And then loosen it until you can only just about move these rings. There we go. Easy as can be, a child could do this. All right guys, so now that you also know how to change the front track width, Let's go over some situations and talk about what you should do in them. So if you feel like the front end doesn't really have enough grip or that the card is not picking up enough, then you should increase the track width. If you just find the card too bitey at the front end or if it just picks up too much, decrease the front track width. Now I will tell you another OTK life hack. If you put the front track width to the uh, big ring, so the 50 millimeter ring, that's pretty much also always the perfect amount of track width. So at the front end, put the wide ring, at the rear end, put 1395 millimeters and you pretty much have the bang on setup almost every time. Now, if you have another question about setup, track width or just anything that has to do with karting, I would strongly advise joining my Discord server. In there, we have a lot of karting drivers who are more than willing to help you. A link is in the pinned comment. Now guys, with that also comes the end of this video. If you enjoyed that or found it useful in any way, I would appreciate it enormously if you would hit those like and subscribe buttons. Now guys, hitting those buttons for you is only a couple of clicks and I would appreciate it enormously if you would just hit them. <laughs> and anyway guys, by the way, did you know that the type of rim that you put on the card also has a massive impact on how the card handles? If you want to know a little bit more about that and tire pressures, then I would strongly suggest checking out this video right here. In here I explain all types of OTK wheels and rims and how to do tire pressure. This video however is done and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.